Boiler alert. Boiler alert. Boiler alert. Alright guys, this is Masking JC, the Any Gamer Nexus, back again to bring you guys another dose, dosage, of the Manga Zone. So, it's been two weeks since the last One Piece chapter came out, or one week if you read the legal translation. So, we got one, the new One Piece chapter, and a lot of interesting details in this chapter. Not really a lot to really digest, it's mostly an exposition chapter, a uh, setup segue chapter, leading up to the next series of events to happen. So, this is One Piece chapter 852, The Germ of Failure. And the chapter starts off at the uh, Whole Cake Island Infirmary, or at least the Whole Cake Chateau Infirmary, where Reiju is in, where she's healing up from her gunshot wound. Sanji is there, sneaking around, eyeing in what's going on there. And Reiju, she doesn't remember anything, so she believes that she was shot by one of the guards who was screaming about an intruder. However, Sanji does something where he tells her exactly what happened. So he's telling her the, the truth, the truth of what happened, of the events that really happened. So I didn't really expect that to happen. I thought Reiju was going to be left in the dark for a bit, but she gets told by Sanji what happens. And then we cut away to the prisoner library where a bunch of prisoners are on fire where Jinbei has set free Luffy and Nami from the book and apparently the only way to get people free from Mondor's books is by burning them. That's not really good for people stuck in the books <laughs> to be burned alive so uh, yeah so and Nami mentions how it this all feels a little bit familiar to her which is funny that's a call that's easily a call back to Little Garden right there where you, Little Garden with Mr. Three, you guys remember that? So that's a callback there, really fun callback. And uh, we learn here that Jimbei's entire business with Big Mom, for the most part, taken care of. He just says it's taken care of. So I'm like, already? Like, he says in here that this is a rebellion. How his crew is underneath Big Mom's crew, but considering that he attacked one of her, one of her, uh, one of her children, and is freeing the prisoners, uh, this is a rebellion. So. Jinbei has pretty much made up his mind on what to do here, so if Jinbei is still under Big Mom's crew, then that means that he definitely must have backed out of the roulette, uh, the roulette that happened. So whatever the option was, had to be something really drastic where he couldn't take it. So, which I'm thinking he might have gotten the 100 years of life option because Jinbei is pretty, he's a pretty old dude, he's like in his 40s, so you take what happened with Pedro and Zeppo into account. If Jimmy had lost all the years of his life right there, that means the rest would have to come from someone in his crew. So he probably didn't want to put anyone else in danger of that because Jimmy is that selfless guy. He he's willing to die for his own ideals, but he's not really he's not willing to let someone else die for him. So I can see him backing out if that was the case. Luffy just runs out and takes out the the guards that are coming into the library. Which is really ridiculous, Luffy, you should not be running out like that because Big Mom is out there and she's fucking crazy. And what's going on with Big Mom and Brooke? Oda, what's going on with Big Mom and Brooke? What, what's going on? I need to know what's going on with that. Is Brooke in trouble or not? Because I feel like, I think the next time I'm going to see Brooke, he's going to be KO'd. I got a bad feeling about that. But anyway, back in the infirmary, uh, Sanji and Reiju are talking. Reiju mentions how, even though the... Big Mom pirates plan to kill the Vinsmoke family. She's okay with that because she believes the Vinsmoke should die out. Which I'm not surprised by her saying that because she seems like someone who, who she 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 has never really appeared to be all too fond of the Germa and what they stood for as a nation. And what they did with Sanji was definitely something that factored into her decision right here. It seems like she's willing to die along with the Germa. And that's because uh, she's she's modified. She's a modified human who can't feel emotion. Get this little splice of, of flashbacks where we see Sanji's mother, whose name is Sola. We finally learned her name. Oda, why couldn't you have given her an Oda box? You know, telling us what her name is. It's like, it's like an off an off comment by a judge. Oh, hey, Sola, don't do that. What? Sola, hello. But apparently, Sola did not want the children to become. Uh, genetically modified humans because apparently they wouldn't be human anymore and they would be losing their humanity and Judge was like uh, let them be monsters as long as they can win wars I'll gladly let my children get the ultimate power so 
Judge was pretty much at that point. We were not surprised. He was pretty much, he was pretty much steadfast in his ideals to keep his children, or at least make his children into genetically modified monster warriors. And apparently, she took a drug. A drug. That's a, a topic for discussion. So she took a drug to try to stop the genetic modification from happening. I'm not sure how this works. Because we haven't seen how they how they genetically modified them while they're still in her womb. So that's something we haven't seen yet. So he took a drug to try to counteract the modification uh, process. But it apparently failed on on the brothers, on Ichiji, Niji, and Yonji. And I think Reiju, but that's up for debate. However, Sanji was not was affected by the drug and he hasn't awakened the genetically modified traits. So this means that Sanji reason for not having uh, the exoskeleton and genetic modifications was because of the drug his, uh, his mom took. And about this drug, I'm not too sure, but I think this could be the same drug we saw in um, in Punk Hazard that Caesar Clown made. Was it the one the one that Chopper took out of the kids? Uh, NC something NC. NC twenty it's it's a it's it's NC something, but it's that drug that Caesar was using to make the children gigantic. Now I don't think that was the exact same drug to use uh, that was being ministered like that, but I think that drug could have played a role in somehow like washing away the name modification if that's the case. But that's this is interesting. This is just my theory right there. So I'm just throwing that out there. Most of this chapter, like I said, is exposition. Sanji realizes that you know his mother pretty much went to that state where, you know, the drug had after effects on her. She became deathly sick because of the drug, which led to her death. So I feel like that's a a burden lifted off Sanji's soldiers because I think he somehow believes that he's responsible for her death, but that right here is not the case. But I don't know why he would feel responsible. I mean, maybe because he thought he fed her that food and maybe it led her condition to getting worse. I don't know, not too sure. But uh, it was just, it was just a, it was just mostly like a, a character talking point moment between Luffy and I'm not Luffy. I'm still thinking about Luffy for some reason between Sanji and Reiju. And um, we learned that the cuffs are fake. The cuffs, they're fake. Apparently, uh, I'm not too sure. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm sure she's telling the truth. There's no reason for her to lie. So the cuffs that she put on Sanji this whole time are fake. They're duds. Which, um, I don't know how to feel about that. I'm, I'm okay with it, but I feel like it's, it's too, too sudden because it takes away the threat of the cuffs. I mean, the whole cuff thing was a little ridiculous because it's like. <laughs> because it's it, it I heard people compare it to any lobby with Robin and Sea Stone handcuffs and people saying, Oh, why can't Sanji just put hockey on his hands to keep him from exploding and stuff? But then we realize uh we don't know how hockey works that way against containing explosions. But Um I'm glad that I think I'm I think I'm mostly glad that the handcuff thing is just a uh, fake. So that's not something that Sanji has to deal with later on. No, they don't have to go oh we gotta find the keys for Sanji's handcuffs. That's something that's taken out. That's just the entire chapter, really. It's 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 Sanji and Reiju's discussion. We get Luffy, Jinbei, uh, Nami and stuff in the beginning. Luffy's rampaging throughout the chateau right now, trying to find Sanji, and we got like a little dialogue with um, with Smoothie, which you know she's right there in front of the, in front of the room with Big Mom's fighting Brook. Why can't you show us Big Mom fighting Brook? Oda, Oda, Oda. So Smoothie's just letting the subordinates know that you know. To hunt down Luffy and saying that if they have to kill him, so keep him from getting to the fourth floor, which is kind of reminds me of Impel Down a little bit. I'm just saying that the whole golden floor thing reminds me of Impel Down. That was a pretty okay chapter. Um, you know, it's nice that Luffy and Nami out of the book. That's the big thing. They're out of the book. Um, Sanji's handcuffs are no longer an issue. Uh, the only issue right now is Zeph. And but Rachel tells him, don't worry about that. Worry about leaving the island right now. Deal with that when you leave the island. But you think uh he leaves the island just finds out hello beep, boop, 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 beep, boop, beep, boop, boop. uh yeah um i need to execute uh red leg zeph like unless 
Big Mom betrays him before he finds out, and then he realizes, okay, you know what? Sanji right now is not a word right now. We were going to do this all a ruse from the beginning, so there's no point now in using Sanji because this is all a fucking ruse. So that's that's how I can see that getting resolved without Sanji having to take care of it, but yeah. <laughs> Overall, this was like I said, this is an okay chapter. Um we're on a break again next week. Sorry. Well, I saw it coming anyway, because this the pattern breaks. Like you knew a break was coming. So that's good. I think the next batch of chapters we're going to lead up into the climax of the arc. I don't think we're gonna even see the wedding because this all this is happening but the day before the wedding. So unless Luffy, Jinbei, Nami, and Sanji somehow, you know, get trapped somewhere for like a while, uh the wedding's not gonna happen. So I'm interested to see what Oda is gonna do on that front, so Maybe Sanji's gonna meet Luffy and they're gonna conduct a plan. Hmm. Interesting. So, that's my thoughts on the chapter, guys. Not really a lot to digest besides the whole Sanji Rager stuff and the stuff involving his mother and the drugs. But, let me know what you guys think down below. Be sure to like the video if you enjoyed it. Subscribe if you haven't for more One Piece manga reviews and more content as well. And, 